The Cincinnati Bengals are one of the most interesting teams in the NFL because for the last couple years, they've been right on the verge of a Super Bowl win. They just can't quite get it done. But today, what we're going to do is try to finish off that roster and get them a ring. But huge shout out to Max Chen for the suggestion. Go drop them a sub. Their link is in the description. I have already done that. And if you want a shout out just like that one, just let me know what team to do next. That's all you got to do. It takes you like two seconds. I'll do the team you want me to do. I'll sub to you. I'll give you a shout out and other people will sub to you. It's a win, win, win. But I'm glad you guys have been enjoying these rebuilds. I'm glad to be back. Let's again shoot for 200 subs. Nope, 200 likes, 2,400 subs. We should be easily able to do that. Because, I mean, imagine if everyone did it. We would be at, like, 3,000 likes, 5,000 subs. And you're part of that someone, so if you do it, we will easily hit the goal. Plus, it'll make you an OG of the channel. But last thing, be sure to turn on notifications for the channel if you want to be one of the first people to ever see these videos. And with that, that's enough plugging, and let's get into today's rebuild. Hello everyone, it is Brandon the Simp here, of course joined by the GOAT. Mikey McDingle, and we're gonna be rebuilding the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are a very interesting team, because up until like a couple years ago, they were seen as one of the kind of joke franchises in the NFL. I think they were the team that had the longest active streak of not winning a playoff game. But recently, they've become one of the three best teams in the NFL. Of course, reaching a Super Bowl last year, and losing in questionable fashion in the AFC Conference championship. Thank you, Zebras. But this team is made good by what has the possibility to be one of the best quarterback receiver duos ever in Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Of course, record setting at LSU. The 2019 LSU team is known as maybe the best college football team ever, and Burrow and Chase were the two stars of it, and they have been very much stars in the NFL so far. Not to mention, the rest of this team is very good. T. Higgins had a breakout year. Joe Mixon's one of the best running backs in the league. Tyler Boyd's a very good receiver. Defensively, Trey Hendrickson is very good. DJ Reader, Chidobe Awuzie, Jesse Bates, Logan Wilson's a very underrated player. This is a very good team. However, there are some holes, and that's kind of what holds this team back. Obviously, their offensive line, they did a lot to change it throughout the offseason. However, injuries piled up, and it ended up kind of biting them in the end. That's definitely going to be one of our objectives in this rebuild, to fix this offensive line. Another thing is kind of their pass rush. Trey Hendrickson is very good, don't get me wrong, but outside of him they have Sam Hubbard, who's a good run defender, but in terms of pass rush, he doesn't bring a lot. And outside of them, Cam Sample, Joseph Osai, like, they're more prospects than anything. I like them, but they haven't done much yet. And I actually think their corner depth is kind of a problem. Obviously, Chidobe Awuzie went down during the year, and they struggled to find someone to step in as their number one corner. I mean, Trey Flowers, Eli Apple. Not ideal. I do like Daxton Hill a lot, actually. He's a very interesting player. He can play free safety, slot corner, outside corner. He even played like box safety at Michigan. We're going to play him as a corner here because that's kind of our immediate need more than free safety. He was my favorite safety out of last year's class. This is just kind of one of those teams that has a lot of star power, but also has a lot of holes and pretty important holes, just like your mothers to me. So that's enough talking. There's just a lot to say about this team and let's get into year number one and let's see what we can do with this team. Am I crazy or does Jonah Williams hair look really weird here? It looks like he has uh like frosted tips or something. Why is it so much brighter than the rest of his hair? His beard also looks like it doesn't have any texture in it. It kind of just looks flat if that makes any sense. I, I don't know. It just caught me off guard. Did my mans come back from like 2005 or something? I, I don't know. That's interesting. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't even know players could hit breakouts if they already had X Factor. Is this a new thing? Am I just dumb and I've never seen this before? Or is this new? Because Joe Burrow already obviously had X Factor, but he hit a breakout and got 15,000 XP. That's pretty huge. At the midseason point of year number one, we are actually two and four five. 
uh what 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 happened so we won our first game we kind of destroyed our division rivals in the Steelers and then we went on almost the five game losing streak a four game losing streak and then we destroy the Saints and then we lose to the Falcons of all teams so we either destroyed the teams we played or we lost make makes a lot of sense this game is so great smile but we have some re-signings to make here maybe we won't re-sign anybody because we are terrible oh no we probably do have to. Jesse Bates, Von Bell, Samaje Pirine, I'm probably good on. I'd rather pay, you know, starters. Jermaine Pratt, Hayden Hurst, eh. I mean, there are some players here. It could be much worse. I definitely at least do want Jesse Bates back. He is very interested. We'll just offer him neutral. It's about 16 and a half per year. So we'll see if he takes that and he doesn't, even though he was very interested. Okay. He just wants a longer deal, I guess. Now for Von Bell, that's actually interesting because we have Daxton Hill, who we could move back to safety if we wanted to. We'll hold off on Von Bell. We'll see how he does this year. Jermaine Pratt, I do want him back. He is the one who was being kind of a bitch after the playoff game and like yelling at, uh, not yelling at, but like indirectly yelling about Joseph Osai hitting the player late, which I think the refs just had a narrative that they wanted to fill. But either way, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have yelled at him. So I don't know, but we do get him back outside of that though we'll definitely wait on everybody else here because they're all either older or just lower level players or rep replaceable players i just spilled my drink absolutely everywhere so that's super fun but at the end of year number one we unfortunately finish nine and eight barely missing out on the playoffs the commies made it at nine and eight in the nfc so i wish we were in the nfc but this was a very strong division the ravens at 11 and 6 the browns at 12 and 5 us at 9 and eight obviously let's not talk about the Steelers but other than the Steelers this was a winning division Joe Burrow was pretty good here in year one 4,500 yards 36 touchdowns 12 picks which is a little high but he I would definitely say he was not the problem with this team he had a pretty good year rushing Joe Mixon was very nice 1,300 yards 13 touchdowns unlucky number but apparently lucky for him 4.9 yards per carry in receiving Jamar Chase 1,200 yards 12 touchdowns 12 was his lucky number I guess we're seeing a lot of lucky numbers here apparently 1100 yards for T Higgins seven touchdowns Tyler Boyd with 800 yards but 11 touchdowns Hayden Hurst with 800 yards and blocking it definitely looks like the offensive line was a problem Jonah Williams wasn't horrible I guess Jackson Carmen was pretty terrible allowing nine at left guard overall like there was nobody on the line where I could say oh they did well defensively Jermaine Pratt led the team with tackles led the team in tackles with 125 Logan Wilson and just one behind him. DJ Reader led the team in tackles for loss with 16. BJ Hill, which is where I want to meet your mother, if you know what I'm saying, which that's honestly a top five name in the league, BJ Hill. And he's a pretty damn good player too. Bit of a down year in real life this year compared to at least the couple years before, but still pretty good. Trey Hendrickson with 11, Sam Hubbard with 11, and Sacks. BJ Hill and Sam Hubbard tied for first with eight, which is pretty good. Six for DJ Reader and only four for Trey Hendrickson at a nice 90 overall, he only had four sacks. Makes sense. I mean, it's with morale and he developed into the 90 overall, but it, he's still a 90 overall. He should be getting more than four sacks. Chidobe Awuzie led the team with four interceptions. Logan Wilson with three, two for Von Bell and one for Jesse Bates and Daxton Hill. Not many interceptions. I mean, there were players that got a good amount, but there weren't many different players that got one, if, if that makes any sense. It might not because I'm stupid, but I hope it does. And I never check this, but forced fumbles, two for Jesse Jesse Bates won for PJ Locke, and Jesse Bates recovered one. But let's check out yearly awards. You know what? I'm feeling different. Let's check out Coach of the Year. I never check this, but I guess we could. Kyle Shanahan wins it. I doubt we're up there. No, we are not. The GOAT Mikey McDingle is not there, but Josh Allen wins MVP. Justin Herbert is nowhere to be seen, actually. We see Carson Wentz up there. That's something, I guess. Offensive Player of the Year goes to Stephon Diggs. No bangles. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Von Miller. Also, no Bengals. Damn, okay. Brees Hall wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. A lot of Jets and Texans up here. No Bengals. I guess we didn't really have any rookies on offense. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Trent McDuffie, who's been pretty good in real life. Daxton Hill at number seven, and that's it. So we only had one player up there overall for any major award. Definitely a unexpected year number one. But let's try to forget this ever happened, and let's get into the offseason. That's an... <laughs> 
that's an interesting Super Bowl there. Uh, the 49ers beat the Chargers, I guess the California Super Bowl. The 49ers unfortunately win 38 to 28, which can I talk about this? 49, 49ers players are such fucking bitches. They, I don't think I've ever seen actual players on a team complain about the outcome of a game as much as I have seen their players complain, which it's not surprising. You know, I've had the narrative that they're kind of a weird, kind of dirty, whiny team, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna harp too much on that because I don't want to make people too mad, but people are kind of realizing that too. I see it mentioned in like comments on fucking like Instagram and shit. People, the, the narrative that I've been pushing is finally being affirmed. It feels good. In terms of re-signings though, we have a decent amount of money. We have 76 million to work with. Now, I don't feel comfortable spending that because I know we're gonna have a lot of contracts coming up, but I definitely do want Jesse Bates back, obviously. He said the length was the problem, which, you know, that's 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 relatable as hell, but we'll up it by one year. We'll see if he takes that, and he does. Beautiful. But honestly, outside of him, I think we're just gonna let everybody else go. Von Bell is an interesting one. How did he do this year? He did have two picks. I forgot about that. Six pass deflections, 34 catches allowed. I wonder where that ranks in the league. I mean, clearly you can't check exactly, but just for strong safeties, I wanna see if that's good. Ooh, Jamal Adams had two pass deflections, 47 catches allowed. You know what? Honestly, it might be pretty good for a strong safety at least. Madden numbers are always a bit different from real life, so it's kind of hard to gauge at times if a player was really good or, wow, Harrison Smith, six pass deflections, five picks, only 19 catches allowed. Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'll re-sign Von Bell, at least statistically, that was a pretty good year. He is interested. This isn't that expensive of a contract anyways. It's like seven point something mil and he takes it. Beautiful. This is an interesting free agent class. There honestly isn't much. This is kind of going to be how it is in real life too. I mean, there aren't that many good free agents this year, I don't think. Think? I think the best one would have been like Tom Brady, but he retired. Which shout out to all the people that called me dumb for saying that this is Tom Brady's final year. Like people were like, no, he already said he's coming back. You, you, you're a fucking idiot. You don't know which what you're talking about. Like he had already retired the year before. He had a down year. It was pretty obvious. I mean, maybe he comes back. Maybe he gets bored and comes back. I wouldn't rule that out. But so far, I'm looking pretty right. We'll just say that. I do think we need a tight end though. And actually, there's a pretty good one staring us right in the face. Irv Smith has never stayed healthy, but I loved him coming out of college. And he has superstar dev here, is a 77 overall, which isn't terrible, and is only 25 years old. So that seems kind of like a no-brainer. And what else could we really go for here? I definitely want to look at the offensive line, and we could go with either a linebacker or a pass rusher. I think if I do go pass rush, I'm going to look to the draft for that, because I mean, we already have decent players, but I would like to get like a young and decent player that we could maybe turn into a stud. So let's look for maybe a guard and that's probably all we're gonna do. Honestly, there's nobody here that we could really play at guard. I mean, we could get 31 year old Daryl Williams, David Edwards. Honestly, I'd rather just draft somebody. So, I mean, I could offer David Long a contract. He's not very expensive. 6.6 .6 mil a year over four years. Does that give us the lead? If not, I'll just pull out. Unlike I do with your mother. But it it ties us for the lead. We'll at least see if he takes it. He probably won't because he's not interested in the team, but it is what it is. Let's see if either of these two players sign and they both do. We actually get both of them. Okay. Honestly, not the biggest free agent class ever, but I feel like this is pretty important. These are two players that are younger at a decent overall that we got for pretty cheap. So I really like this. Here we have a fifth year option for Joe Burrow. I, I don't know if the Bengals have done this yet, but I mean, clearly we're gonna, we're gonna pick that up. We're not gonna decline it. Um, yeah, that's, that's a very easy decision. But super quick before we get into the draft, I think y'all already know what I'm gonna say if you've seen one of my videos before. Be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton and it's super easy for you to do. It takes you like two seconds. I'm sorry I do it so much, but it really does help these videos grow and helps YouTube know, hey, people are enjoying this video. So if you're enjoying it, then help show me and show YouTube that you are enjoying it. I would very much appreciate it and also turn on notifications for my channel if you want to be one of the first people to ever see my videos and let me know what team to do next for a shout out in the next video but going into the draft Logan Wilson did get superstar dev 
which is interesting. I do think our main need is going to be offensive line, though. I mean, it's almost our only need. I guess we might need a fourth receiver in a second tight end, maybe a running, like a second running back. But I mean, we really, this team is really good. We're already in 86 overall. So I mean, hey, there isn't really much else for us to do here. Let's see what we can do in the draft. Here in the draft, the Bears have the number one overall pick, which, you know, pretty realistic. The Steelers weren't quite that bad in real life, but so the top five looks decent. I get, well, actually not really. I guess the only realistic ones are the Bears and the Texans, because the Seahawks and Lions and then the Giants all had top, or all had winning records, should not be in the top six. So it is what it is. But we have the 16th overall pick, and what do we want to do here? The Cardinals go with another like weird hybrid linebacker player from Clemson didn't work out super well with Isaiah Simmons but you do you Cardinals what do I want to do here with this pick I do think I'm gonna go Osiris Torrance now I don't know what happened to the rosters because I had to go and create Osiris Torrance myself I downloaded this draft class which most of you know and I just kind of made changes to it to kind of fit you know what kind of players are ranked where and just basically rearranged it and had to create players that weren't already in there and I had to create Osiris Torrance but for some reason his college still glitched I don't know it's not that important though I'll just change that but I mean he's really the obvious choice here we need a guard definitely a big beefy dude no homo technically a bit of a reach because he's more projected towards the end of the first but it's not that big of a deal especially when offensive line is such a need for us so let's take him hidden dev 90 strength he looks like he will be a really good player. Now with this next pick, what do I want to do here? There's still some pretty good receivers left. Zay Flowers, Josh Downs. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go Luke Musgrave. He's definitely an interesting player out of Oregon State. He is fairly athletic, has very good route running here. Good Lord. He's definitely more of a developmental player because he doesn't create a ton of separation as a tight end, but he could be kind of schemed into a good tight end because he is athletic like I was saying. Just a high upside player, so let's take him to be our number two tight end. He has hidden dev. you love to see it. And with this last pick, I've taken him in rebuilds before, but we're gonna go DJ Turner. Definitely a smaller corner at 5'9". Is he actually 5'9"? Okay, I was gonna say, he's six foot. He's not 5'9". I don't know what, I don't know why he's 5'9 here, but okay. But yeah, very athletic, not accurate here. I'll definitely get him kind of looking more accurate to his real life self after the draft, but we're gonna take him here. Again, just another very high upside player that is represented by that hidden dev, so I definitely like that pick a lot. I don't know what we're gonna do with him, but he'll at least be good depth and maybe a corner for when Mike Hilton gets older, so I like that pick a lot. At this point, it's just a luxury pick, pretty much. So we definitely had a pretty good draft, honestly. Osiris Torrance is a 72 overall, obviously with that hidden dev looking pretty nice good lead block and impact block good strength overall looks like a very good player luke musgrave while he is only a 68 overall does have that hidden dev obviously should be a good second tight end outside of that dj turner's looking pretty nice 71 overall i don't know what we're gonna do with him but at the very least he'll be a good like fourth corner maybe we can let someone go if their contract expires and just slide him in there we also took keanu benton mohammed Ibrahim, just some depth players. Carlton Marshall's a very interesting player in real life, but not going to do much for us here. So that was a very good draft, in my opinion, considering we didn't really have any needs other than maybe interior offensive line. But let's get into year number two. Here is a look at the team going into year number two of the rebuild, and this is a very nice looking team. I mean, obviously studs across the board. Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, a lot of J names, T. Higgins, a lot of studs on defense too and we have a lot of developmental players like Irv Smith, Osiris Torrance. Most of our studs are still young players. Daxton Hill. Like this is a really really nice looking team. Honestly I might even do that just to develop Daxton Hill a little more. Mike Hilton's getting up there. He's probably 30, 29? 29. Okay. So I'm very excited to see how this team does this year. Here is a look at the specialists. Pretty much exactly what you would expect. So with that let's get into year number two and i'll see you guys at the mid-season point okay this team is cursed in madden
Madden, I swear. Normally the Bengals are good in franchise, right? It still says we're 1-0. and I love this game. It's super high quality. We are 1-5 and at the midseason point. Um, not amazing. We have some upgrades. These better be good. Jamar, okay, they are pretty good. Well, one is. The rest don't really matter. Why are we 1-5? and Can I check the stats? I'm guessing it's our defense. Oh, our offense isn't doing that well. Joe Burrow's doing very well. Joe Mixon's doing very well. Receiving, obviously, doing well. Is the offensive line dog shit? No, our offensive line is very good. It's purely our defense. We we have four total sacks at week number eight. Um, that, that might be the problem. Four total interceptions. That's not quite as bad, but definitely not good. Good amount of tackles for loss, but sacks are definitely more important. Well, I guess. I, I thought the Bengals' defense is normally good. It's very good in defense, or it's very good in real life. They have a very good defensive coordinator whose name I can't remember right now because I'm stupid. I think he's trying out for like the Cardinals head coaching job. I think we're going to change this defense though because it's not work. What's even a good defense in this game? I think I remember Kansas City's being pretty good, which is weird because in real life, it's not so much. I mean, they definitely have good players just as a whole. They don't play very well for whatever reason. So yeah, we definitely need a change there. We'll see if it does better. It did pretty poorly last year too, so it's not like this is a new thing for this rebuild, but we'll definitely try to get that figured out. And then we have some re-signings here. We have 70 mil to work with, so I'm guessing there are going to be some players. And yeah, there definitely are. So none of them are interested except Logan Wilson. We'll get Logan Wilson out of the way first. We'll bump it a little bit just to entice him a little more because he's like pretty interested, but not fully interested and we're not doing very well. So we'll see if he takes this. It's about a little over 13 mil a year, over three years. And he, he doesn't like it. I need a bigger offer to overcome this team not being a fit for it. Well, it's a fit for you. It's just a terrible team. Is there anybody else here that's important? Yes, there is. There's Tyler Boyd, Jonah Williams. There are a lot of contracts this year. Chidobe Awuzie, he's our number one corner. We definitely want him back. We're, oh, I don't want to pay him 18 mil a year. We'll offer him this. It's about 17 mil a year over two years. He's probably not even going to take it. He doesn't. Okay. How about DJ Reader? We could wait to re-sign him until he is uh, regressing a little bit because he should go down to like an 85, 86 at the end of the year. This is about three years, 14 mil a year? Like 14.7 mil a year. And he doesn't like it either. So nobody's interested because we are dog shit. How about T. Higgins? Um, we'll go player friendly. It's about 18 and a half mil a year over five years. Guess what? He doesn't want it. Wow, we completely struck out. We might have to make a trade here, honestly. Tyler Boyd is older. DJ Reed. I mean, we might have to make some trades because I don't think these players are going to want to come back. Here, we're going to be trading Tyler Boyd to the Bears for a second and a fourth. I wish it didn't have to be this way. I really like Tyler Boyd in real life, but we're not going to be able to resign him. There are just too many players to resign there, and we're going to have to pay them all a lot of money. So he's kind of the odd man out because he's already 28 here. I don't want to pay him long term because he's just going to regress. So we get a bit of value for him. I don't want to have to trade Chidobe Awuzie, but he is going to be so expensive. I don't know if we can pay that contract. So at least we do get pretty good value for Awuzie. We get a first and a third. Again, a very underrated player in my opinion. I think he's one of the top corners in the league and he doesn't get talked about enough. Unfortunately, he wants over 18 mil a year and we can't really pay that. He is getting up there in age a little bit, but we do get a very good return for him. I don't know if they would be able to get this much in real life, but we're going to do it here because I don't know. In my opinion, this is pretty fair because I do see him as a very good player. What the hell? Apparently, we made some good decisions at the midseason because we make the playoffs at nine and eight. So back to back nine and eight seasons. But this one is a little more successful because we are in the playoffs. Again, a very good division. Well, I guess there isn't a super good team here. Browns, Ravens, 10 and 7, us 9 and 8. Steelers still in last at 6 and 11. I believe that's the exact same order. Let's see how the team did this year. So Joe Burrow had a borderline MVP season, 5,300 yards, 41 touchdowns, 9 picks. Would probably be MVP in real life. Probably won't be here though. 1,300 yards for Joe Mixon, 21 rushing touchdowns, the funny number. 4.7 yards per carry, not much rushing outside of that. Ibrahim had 200 yards, 5 touchdowns as a rookie, receiving 1,400, almost 1,500 yards for Jamar Chase and 11 touchdowns. T. Higgins, I hope we can bring him back. He had 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns. Irv Smith was even solid, 895 yards, only three touchdowns though. And Joe Reed, 738 yards, wish there was a one in front of that and five touchdowns. So pretty good filling in for Tyler Boyd.
played. Blocking was actually really good this year. Jonah Williams was fine at left tackle. Lyle Collins was very good at right tackle. Osiris Torrance was solid at left guard. Ted Karras and Alex Kappa were both pretty good. Tackles, Logan Wilson led the team with 132. David Long in his first year here with 121. Tackles for loss, 20 for Trey Hendrickson, 14 for BJ Hill, 13 for Sam Hubbard, and sacks. It was definitely a good defensive scheme change or playbook change. 15 sacks for Trey Hendrickson, 8.5 for Sam Hubbard, 4 for BJ Hill, 3.5 for DJ Reader, and interceptions, 2 each from David Long and Daxton Hill, and 1 from a few players. So, very much a good defensive playbook change. We were second in offense, 24th in defense still, but I bet we would have been dead last if we didn't switch. Second in points scored. How about points allowed? That's the more important thing. 25th, so not good, but much better than we were. Josh Allen does win MVP. Joe Burrow at number three, unfortunately. Mason, oh my god. Mason Rudolph at number five as the QB of the Buccaneers. That's interesting. CJ Stroud up there on the Giants. That's interesting. Offensive player of the year goes to Lamar Jackson. Joe Mixon at number five. Cedric Wilson is just goaded here. Apparently, he was up there last year. Joe Burrow at eight. Jamar Chase at nine. I hit my mic with my chin. I hope you didn't hear that. Josh Allen wins defensive player of the year. Trey Hendrickson at three. No other Bengals. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Jordan Addison on the Patriots. That's interesting. That could happen. You never know. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Ivan Pace on the Titans. That's a weird one. Okay. No Bengals. So not many rookies did well, but we did have some very good performances from our solidified good player. But we have some upgrades here. Not really important. I mean, Musgrave as our number two tight end, kind of important, but not really. And we have a first of many scenario. I do want to jump into this game, even though it is your number two, just to see what happens. I don't expect to win, but I want to see what happens. Definitely play it cool. Not going to guarantee the win out here. And let's jump in and see if we can take down the Buffalo Bills. Here we go in the wild card against Buffalo. I don't really expect to win, but it would be kind of fun if we did. I see the Cowboys bitching the Giants at the bottom. That was fun. Let's see if we can take down Buffalo in their stadium. They go up early 3-0. They put up a touchdown. It's 10-0. They score another touchdown. It's 17-0. We put up back-to-back -back points. They are up 2013 now. 2016, 23-20. We are up now. So we pull ahead, even though we were down like 17. We still have the lead up 30-27 to in the fourth. We put up a touchdown. They put up a touchdown. They put up another, and they beat us. It looks like our offense stalls, and they go down, go up, and they win. You hate to see it. We have a Panthers Chiefs Super Bowl here. The Panthers win 35 to 28. Definitely an interesting one. It's kind of rare to see the Panthers being good here. Who is their quarterback, actually? I want to see. If it's like Matt Corral or something, I'm going to shit, honestly. Oh, it is. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Who else would it be? 70 overall Matt Corral. Well, I don't even know if he was starting. It could have been Sam Darnold. I hope not, but it might have been. No, it was probably Matt Corral because it looks like he developed. They have Rashad Penny. Wow, they have a loaded running back room of mid. A loaded receiving core of mid. What is this team? Will Disley. How many Seahawks do they have? Also, how did they get Will Disley? He's under contract for like three years. This is a ri How did this team win the Super Bowl? It's not good. What the fuck? Okay, whatever, man. But four re-signings here. I definitely want DJ Reader back. He declined that. Do you think we could get away with player friendly? I mean, he declined it last time, but he is more interested now. It's two years, like 14 and a half mil or whatever. Let's see if he takes it. Okay, he does. Beautiful. Now, outside of him, though, I don't know if anyone is going to be interested. Logan Wilson is, and he declined our last offer. We'll go just straight player friendly. That's like 15 mil a year over four years, but it's fine. We have money. He takes it. Beautiful. T Higgins, we're probably going to have to go very player friendly, and he still might not even take it. God, it's 21 and a half mil a year. Whatever. Just, oh, he doesn't even take it. I might tag him, honestly, because he is pretty important to the team. It's 29 mil to tag. Good Lord. Jonah Williams was pretty good this last year, but if he doesn't 
wouldn't take this, it's not the end of the world, because that's a lot of fucking money. Four years, 15 mil a year, he takes it. Okay, I don't know how I feel about that, but he took it. And is there anybody else here that we want to resign? Not really. So let's tag T. Higgins, 29.7 mil a year. Yikes. <laughs> Hopefully we can resign him next year. Would they have a fifth year for- No, he was early second. I always think of him as a late first, but I think he was early second. Are there any cuts we can make here? No, unfortunately not. I mean, I could cut Ted Karras, but he's been pretty good. Is that how you say his name, by the way? Because I used to say it like Ted Karras or something, but I've also heard people say Ted Karras. He's been around forever. He's been around as long as I've been a fan of the league, pretty much. So I, I, I don't know, man. I should know it, but I don't. In free agency, though, there is like nobody that's interested, but there are some very good players. Unfortunately, we're kind of broke, so I don't think we're going to be able to get anybody here, but we might. Oh, wait, really? Wait, <laughs> hold on. So I don't know if we're necessarily going to be able to get him back because he's not super interested. He has a tiny bit of interest, but there are two teams tied with us. It is kind of poverty time tied with us. I mean, it's the Texans and Jaguars. I definitely do think we are the better team. By this point, the Jaguars might be good too, but I don't know. But it would be hilarious if we could trade Chidobe Awuzie for like a first and a third, and then they let him go and we just bring him back in for agency. I don't think we're going to get him, but let's try. He doesn't take it. So hold on. I'm going to pull out, pause, something I'm not used to, if you know what I'm saying. And let's up it to very player friendly. I think it'll still be just tied for first, unfortunately, but it should be a little more enticing. We are still listed behind the Jags. I don't know if that means literally anything, but let's see if he takes it. He signs. He signs with us. Let's go. So we basically just scammed. Um, Who did we even trade him to? Was it the Patriots? I genuinely don't remember, but he has an X Factor now as well, so we just got him back better than he was. Trey Hendrickson also went up to X Factor, so that's fun, but we we absolutely scammed whoever we traded him to. Any other dev ups on offense? Unfortunately not. Torrance and Musgrave obviously have star. Ibrahim, Ibrahim as well. So we're looking real nice. I almost didn't even show this just because it's kind of obvious, but we're, we're going to pick up Jamar Chase's fifth year option. I mean, yeah, I, I pressed an arrow on accident there. I always do this shit. It was the left one though, so it, it didn't do anything. I'm glad it wasn't the right one because I almost said no. I guess it wouldn't have been the end of the world because next year could be the last year anyways, but we'll, we'll see. I don't trust this team yet necessarily. It should play a lot better than it does, so we'll see what happens. In the draft, I'm kind of disappointed by our picks. We don't pick until number 19. Hold on. I want, I'm want. i stupid. Let me check again. Who did we get the pick from? Because I know we traded Boyd to the Bears, and then, yeah, it was the Patriot. Oh, we have number 19 and 20 back-to-back. -back. That's kind of fun, I guess. So let's just simulate. Hold on. I want to see what the Texans do with their first pick. They go QB. This is a loaded QB class, by the way. I think there were three top fives, and then a few first. Oh, only one first, or two firsts outside of that. And then it goes straight to day three. So they're either great or kind of dog shit. That's fun. Ooh, that guy looks good. Wait. Taquan Barkley? Is that a rel relative of Saquon Barkley? Um, we don't need QB, but this guy looks very interesting. Not good deep accurate. Maybe he's not good, but either way, it doesn't matter. QB isn't a need for us literally at all. Let's see what we can do with our pick or I guess picks. Obviously, we traded Tyler Boyd away, so I kind of want to go receiver here. Brandon Armstrong, which, nice name. He looks pretty good. Uh, he's a deep threat. He's only 5'8", 185, 21 years old out of Clemson, a deep route. We're in a 4'3'6", which is definitely good. Weak as hell, nine reps on the bench. That's like some Tyran Matthew numbers out here. First and 30 or 20 yard shuttle with a 3'9'9". I don't know if this guy's good. I can't tell for sure, because he has bad awareness, but he has really good deep route, really good spec catch, good catching, but his awareness, his route running outside of deep isn't good. He's fine release and catch in traffic. I don't know why I had a hard, hard time saying that. Wow, I'm just having a full stroke right now. Fuck it, let's take him. He has good deep route running. Okay, thank the Lord. He has hidden dev. 95 speed, 96 change of direction. Looks like a good player. Looks about... He looks like a 1920s, like, country singer. Or what does he look like? He definitely looks like he's from the 1920s or 30s, but I can't pinpoint what he is. Just from that time era, I guess. Time era? Is that... That's not really 
English, but I guess it's technically a valid statement? I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh my lord. George Cofield. Holy shit. He has like A's across the board. It doesn't look like he's that good of a finesse guy, but for power. Damn, son. I think we did re- No, we didn't re-sign Ted Karras. I was thinking about cutting him. So, I mean, George Cofield looks very good. He's already 23, unfortunately, out of Bama, but A, awareness, run block, 34 reps on the bench, like I said, A, pass block power, lead block, maybe A, pass block, maybe A, run block power. Hopefully, let's take him. Hidden dev, only 87 strength with 34 reps. That's interesting, but good excel. Can't see any of his blocking stats yet, which is still so weird to me. I mean, you can literally just see it after the draft. I don't understand the point of this. Maybe just so you don't double dip if you know, like, you got a bad player. I, I don't know. I mean, double dipping is, is a realistic thing either way. I, I don't know, dude. It's whatever. We actually almost have three first round picks because we pick at number 34. I don't know what we're going to do with this pick literally at all, but we have it. I think I'm just going to go Randall Carmichael. He has A awareness, A tackle, B play rec, B power moves, B impact block, maybe good pursuit. Not the best finesse rusher which honestly uh do we take him he's good strength really good broad jump has elite jumping which is cool i mean typically that shows elite get off which is good for a pass rusher obviously yeah let's take him fuck it normal dev god damn it but he'll probably be like a 74 75 overall so i think this is a pretty good pick good strength good speed looks like a pretty good player i hope I just didn't know what else to do with that pick, honestly. <laughs> what else should we even take? I mean, offensive line, we took one. Receiver, we took one. D-line, we took one. We could take another guy. No, we don't need another corner. I guess linebacker, we'll see if there's a good linebacker or safety, and then I think we're just good, honestly. I think this will just be our last pick. We're gonna go Monty Cheeks, which is an elite name, to be honest. He has A awareness, B man coverage, zone coverage, tackle, hit power. He looks good. Only 21 years old out of Texas. We're picking a lot of big school players. Let's take him. Only normal dev, but 90 speed. He ran a 4-5-1. I don't think I showed that for some reason. He looks like a really good player. Also, let me know this is kind of a question of the day type thing. Let me know who you think is gonna win the Super Bowl. This will probably come up the day before the Super Bowl. I'm hoping I can get it out. It's Friday when I'm recording this. Friday is when I wanted to have this video out, so that's not gonna happen. <laughs> but should be out like Saturday night. Like, this should be out the night before the Super Bowl. Let me know who you think is gonna win. I honestly have no idea. My Super Bowl prediction was Bills 49ers. I bought into the Bills hype. I knew I shouldn't have. I have called them overrated multiple times on this channel, but I bought into the hype. I don't know why. I thought they would do it for DeMar. They did not do it for DeMar. That was the only reason I picked them. I was between them and the Chiefs. Clearly, I should have picked the Chiefs. But I personally think, I kind of want it to be the Eagles, but I feel like it's going to be the Chiefs. I just do. The Chiefs, even though they're not really a dynasty, I think they've only won one Super Bowl with as good of a team as they have, but they kind of feel like one. They're, they're getting old. They feel like the old Patriots, like up to 2017 or whatever. They're starting to get that kind of feeling, even though they don't really have nearly the success. I, I don't know why, but they're getting boring. So I want the Eagles, but it's probably going to be the Chiefs. But here is a look at how we did in the draft, and we did amazing, to be honest. Brandon Armstrong, our first pick, is a 75 overall. The guy that looks like he's from the 1920s. Hidden Dev, obviously only 21 years old. 95 5 speed, 81 deep route, 87 spec catch. This guy looks amazing. If he had good short and medium route running, he would be a monster. So that was definitely a good use of our first round pick. And then I think that was the one we got from the Patriots. So I believe we got Armstrong and then the CPU took this Chris Steele guy who also has hidden dev, 99 strength. I mean, that's with plus three from, T uh, what does TMP stand for? Is it just temporary or does it stand for like T? team play or something. I don't know. Either way though, that was definitely worth it. And we ended up getting Chidobe Awuzie back. So get scammed, Patriots. George Cofield is a 75 overall. He is the center hidden dev. Good strength, just overall a good powerful center. I don't even know if he's going to start. We might just cut Ted Karras. We'll see. And then Randall Carmichael. I'm just the best Madden drafter ever because I perfectly predicted his overall. At least I think I said 75. I hope I did, but really good tackling overall. Overall looks pretty well balanced. 
Well, not in terms of pass rush, but I'm talking like speed, strength, all that kind of stuff. Definitely more of a powerful rusher. Looks like a good player. And then the last player we took, I think I recorded Monty Cheeks. Yeah, because he was the one who had 90 speed. He's a 72 overall. Definitely a good player. Very athletic. Pretty strong for only being 227 pounds. You love to see that. And then outside of that, the CPU obviously took Chris Steele, like I said, and not much else. I mean, they didn't do amazing. They took a QB. I don't, that's not really necessary, but okay. You do you. But this was a very, very good draft. Here is a look at the team going into the third and potentially final year of the rebuild. I mean, we have to see how we do. Could do a year four or a year five if I feel like it. Chances are I won't feel like doing a fifth, but maybe a fourth. But like last year, this team is loaded. Really nothing different on the offense other than George Cofield is going to be our starting center. I did cut Ted Karras because that saved us a bit of money. Not that we really need money right now, but well, we kind of did because I wasn't able to fill out the roster with any free agents here so we kind of did need the money but like it wasn't it wasn't that important just I wanted to do it and then Brandon Armstrong is going to be our third receiver he's not a very good slot guy clearly with his 68 short route running and then his 81 deep route running I don't really want to play any of these players in the slot I guess I could put T Higgins down there he could be a big slot Jamar Chase I really don't want to play in the slot I'm not going to play Chase in the slot but just because we don't really have an option there I will put T Higgins in the slot. I'll get that rearranged. And then defensively, those two outside linebackers the CPU took were both speed rushers, which is a scheme fit. And then they both had hidden dev, Byram and Norris. I want to get Byram more playing time because he is younger, but it's pretty cool that we got two dev traits. And I was actually thinking we could move this team to a 3-4 if we wanted. Play Reader, Hill, and Steele as the D linemen. Hendrickson, Hubbard, and then Byram and Norris would be great fits as as our outside linebackers and then put Logan Wilson and David Long as the two starting middle linebackers with Pratt as the three. I mean, we don't really have a reason to do that, but we could if we wanted to. So I was thinking about it, but there, there isn't really a reason to do that. Other than that though, I mean, our starters, I believe are all identical to last year. So I'll get the depth chart rearranged for the specialists and let's get to the mid season point of year number three and let's see how we're doing. Hopefully not two and four or one and five like we were last year. This is why you simulate game by game. I don't know why it works better, but it does. At the mid-season of year number three, we are seven and oh. And it, it's not just like, a, oh, we've been squeaking by with like wins here and there. We have been bitching teams. Like our average points per game has to be like 40. Cause I mean, 52, 42, 31, 52, 38, 42, 28. 28 is our lowest point score to the season. We've scored 52 twice. This off offense is insane. Our defense is doing pretty well. I mean, it did allow 35-28, but it also held the Steelers to 14, so I don't know. Our defense is still a little bit suspect, but our offense is looking very good. Oh wow, my guess was really good. We have exactly 40 points per game. I'm just the best of all time. Chargers have 36, Lions have 33. Notice how all the teams with a lot of points per game are doing very well. It's almost like that's the secret for success the recipe for success but let's see what kind of re-signings we have here i don't know if it's gonna matter because this could be a super bowl year but we might run it back next year anyways uh maybe we can't run it back next year uh we have to re-sign about our entire team maybe that's why everyone i feel like players do play for contracts in this game i don't know if that's like a set thing but i feel like if you're if you're in one of those years where like everybody needs a contract your team plays better i don't know why it just seems like that. Joe Burrow, we'll offer him this though, it's neutral, he's very interested though. We could even bump it to player friendly, but that's a lot more money. So this is seven years, like 47 mil a year, which that's a lot of money, but honestly kind of a steal because I expect him to be wanting like 55 mil plus in real life, we'll see. And he takes it, beautiful, hopefully he doesn't start sucking, we'll see. Joe Mixon, we'll just offer him neutral as well. He's actually really cheap, he only wants nine and a half mil a year, over four years. Let's offer him that. 
and he takes it as well. Now Trey Hendrickson isn't interested, will go player friendly, but that's 27 mil a year. That's a lot of money. Over four years, is that worth it? I mean, he's been good, but last year was like his only good year. Well, I guess it's only been two years, but still. We'll see if he takes that. If he does, ah, he doesn't take it. Okay, we might wait on him for sure. T Higgins, definitely want him back. This honestly isn't too bad. It's five years, almost 20 mil a year. Let's see if he takes that, and he doesn't. But that's fine. We can worry about those later. We have the money. I don't know if we're going to be, be able to bring back Leo Collins, Mike Hilton, BJ Hill, Evan McPherson. But honestly, those are older, replaceable players outside of, obviously, uh, Evan McPherson. And BJ Hill isn't super old. But those aren't, like, the best players on our roster by any means. So let's get to the end of your number three, and let's see how we can finish it out. So again, I'm going to be a bit of a hoe, and you already know what I'm going to say. If you have not already, be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. It's so easy for you to do. It helps YouTube know that people are enjoying this video. Plus, if you've made it all the way here, clearly you have enjoyed it a little bit, unless you fell asleep or something, which, you know, I hope I'm not that boring, but but I might be, you know? It is what it is. So yeah, be sure to do that, and let me, let me know what team to do next, because, of course, if I pick your comment, I will shout you out, tell everyone to sub to you, I'll sub to you myself, and it helps me know what you guys want to see. But this this is a look at the team. Unfortunately, Armstrong does only have star. I was hoping he could maybe have superstar just because he looks like a high upside player, but unfortunately only star, but it's still good considering he's only 21 years old. However, Cofield, George Cofield, our center has superstar dev. He's up to a 79 overall looking very nice. That was a very nice pick, unsurprisingly, because I mean, he had like A's across the board. And defensively, I don't think we had any hidden dev starters, but our defense as a whole is looking very good. Same with our offense, obviously. Our offense is even better. Our offense is at an 89 overall. Surprisingly, this isn't that good of a team compared to, you know, ones we have built before. I mean, we've had like 90 overalls by this point, but this one is definitely very good. But we made the playoffs at 12 and 5. Unfortunately, kind of fell off in the second half of the year. I mean, we went from 7 and 0 to 5 and 5. We finished well overall, but <laughs> kind of a scary second half of the year. I'm guessing our offense didn't really stay as like 40 points per game. We were still the first offense in yards though. Joe, ooh, ew. Joe Burrow had a fine year, 5,000 yards, 40 touchdowns, but 19 interceptions. Throwing some damn near Jameis numbers out here. Well, I guess it wasn't even the most interceptions in the league. Tua on the Steelers and Trevor Lawrence both threw 20. Baker Mayfield is the Buccaneers starting QB. He threw 19. Burrow also threw 19. So it wasn't the most in the league, but definitely a considerable, is that the word considerable? amount? I don't know. Joe Mixon was really nice though. 1,400 yards, 5.2 yards per carry, 25 touchdowns, no fumbles. Muhammad Ibrahim was pretty terrible, 2.8 yards per carry, receiving very well balanced in terms of yards, 1,231 for Chase, 1,228 for T. Higgins, and 1,176 for Brandon Armstrong. Maybe rookie of the year unless there was a QB or something, but really good amount of touchdowns here. 15 for T. Higgins. Irv Smith wasn't fantastic, 740 yards, only three touchdowns touchdowns. Apparently, this team just doesn't target tight ends in the red zone. Almost 500 yards receiving for Joe Mixon as well. He was a stud. Blocking. This is definitely the year to let Lael Collins go, assuming we don't like win a Super Bowl or go super deep in the playoffs this year. Jonah Williams was fine. Alex Kappa wasn't fantastic, but Osiris Torrance and Joe Cofield, or Joe? George Cofield were both amazing. Logan Wilson led the team in tackles with 124. David Long with 113. Tackles for loss. We had a lot. Trey Hendrickson with 21, the funny number. 13 for Reader, 12 for Hubbard, 10 for David Long in sacks. Honestly, I think we're gonna let Trey Hendrickson go, at least for the amount, amount of money he's wanting. 11 and a half sacks is good. It's not like 28 mil a year good. Sam Hubbard with nine. And then outside of that, really nothing. I mean, our third highest pass, or our third highest sack getter was David Long. That's something. Chidobe Awuzie finished first on the team with four interceptions, three for Hill, three for Bell, two for Pratt and Bates, and then one for a few players. It looks like our defense was disappointing. And yeah, our offense, it still finished as the best in the league, but not really close to the 40 points per game we were putting up. Which, you know, I guess you can't really expect that for a full year, but definitely fell off. The Dolphins had 50 passing touchdowns, excuse me? Damn. 
And then defensively, we actually had a pretty good off or defense in terms of points allowed. We were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, tied for eight in points allowed. Jalen Hurts wins MVP. That's interesting. Oh, don't tell. Me. Oh my God, hold on. Don't tell me Jacoby Brissett had 50 passing touchdowns. Maybe like they were starting a different QB and then they regressed and Brissett came in or something? I don't know. But if he did pass 50, if he, if he did have 50 passing touchdowns, why is he third? He must add a lot of picks or I don't know. That's weird, dude. I don't know about that. <laughs> Bryce Young on the Lions up there. Joe Burrow at 10. Offensive player of the year goes to Jonathan Taylor. Joe Mixon at number two. I was hoping Mixon could win that. Cedric Wilson having a hell of a career here. The Dolphins, man. Jesus. Brissett up there. Hill up there. No other Bengals though. Defensive player of the year goes to Vaughn Miller. Trey Hendrickson at eight. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Will Ford of the Jets. And then John Langford of the Texans. Armstrong at number three. Unfortunately, no rookie of the year. And then defensive rookie of the year goes to Josh Booker of the Browns. Only at a 73 overall, but must have been good. Randall Carmichael at 10. So I, I want to, I have a few questions. I, I want to see something. I guess I just have one major question. Oh yeah, no, he had 49 pounds passing touchdowns. Gardner Minshew, the best player to ever walk this earth, came with one, came in and threw a passing touchdown, but Brissett, 49 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 5,100 yards, 69% completion percentage. Nice. You wouldn't think this would be an elite QB room, but 50 passing touchdowns would say otherwise. Honestly, who won MVP? It was Jalen Hurts. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. He only had one less passing touchdown. 500 less yards, but quite a few less interceptions, and I'm guessing he ran for, yeah, 500 rushing yards, 7 rushing touch. Okay, that's a valid MVP. I would say he was better, but it would have been more fun to give it to Jacoby Brissett. But before we jump into the playoffs against the Jets, we have an upgrade here. It's Darrell Bynum, or would you say it Daryl? I never, I can never differentiate I guess this would probably be Daryl. I'm, hold on, I'm curious. I'm gonna cheat. I'm curious. I'm guessing it's just Star, especially considering he's not developing that fast. Okay, yeah, it's just Star. I'm sorry. I had to check. But let's jump in and get, nope, that's not English. Let's jump in against the Jets and let's see if we can take them down. I sure hope so, but it's Madden, so probably not. All right, we're running it back in the playoffs. Let's see if we can get a win this time. We do have five overall on the Jets. We are at home. We start Started off 7-0, not a great second half of the year, but let's probably lose to the Jets. So we go up 7-0, we do start off strong, unlike last time. Now everyone's just kind of stalling, we let them get 3 because we can't move the ball. We finally put up another 3, it's 10-3 going into half, they put up another 3, it is now 16-6, we missed the extra point, we put up another touchdown finally, we put up another, okay now we're laying it on them, we're giving them the full dick. We win 30-14, so definitely a convincing win towards the second half of the game. It was close at first, but we definitely were the better team there. So I'm glad that is the result, because most of the time it isn't. In the divisional round, we're going to be taking on the big, bad Kansas City Chiefs. <sighs> All right, we do have the better team. We have two overall on them. Our offense is one overall better. Our defense is two overall better. But the Chiefs get the home game. They had the better record, even though we had the better team. So we'll see what happens in this one. Obviously, gonna jump in here. Their X factors are definitely better than ours. Uh, Mahomes, Chris Jones, and Travis Kelsey compared to Joe Burrow, Trey Hendrickson, and Chidobe Awuzie. They definitely have more star power than us, but we have the better overall team, so let's see what we can do. I don't have much confidence, though. <laughs> here we go in the divisional against the Chiefs. Uh, Andy Reid slamming the clipboard before the game has even started. I don't know why that's part of the animation. Like, what? Is there something I'm missing there? Like, is that some ritual I just don't know about? Like, is that is that a thing? I, I have no idea. Let's see if we can beat Kansas City, though. They go up early, three to nothing. They score a touchdown there, up 10 to nothing. We just kind of have slow starts. We do put up a touchdown, but we're not doing much else. It seems like we score quick and then nothing else happens for a while. We do put up another 10 points. We put up another three. We're up 20 to 10, 27 10. We're destroying the Chiefs. What happened to Kansas City's offense? They put up 10 points. The entire game. What happened? Patrick Mahomes throwing 100 
261 yards, no touchdowns, three interceptions. It looks like our defense definitely won us this game because our offense was not doing a whole lot. They just got put in great situations and finally decided to score. Two sacks for Trey Hendrickson, Tack McKinley on the Chiefs. That's interesting. But an interception from Chidobe Awuzie, Jesse Bates, and David Long definitely sealed the deal. Oh my god. In the conference championship against the Miami Dolphins, we're going to be taking on borderline MVP Jacoby Brissett. This is fun. <laughs> this is like the matchup I wanted. It's going to be a playoff blizzard too. Maybe we could uh, play to our advantage and have our white unis on, you know what I'm saying? All right, fellas. Anytime I hear the word fellas, I just think of, you know, fellas in Paris, that kind of shit. Why, why did, did anyone see how he just turned? He didn't move his legs. He just kind of slid. That was weird. And then we have a hot opponent, the song by Bobby Shmurda, as I always say. Uh, definitely not insult opponent. Be confident. So that gives plus 10 to like everything to both teams, which we're gonna need in the snow. So let's jump in against the Miami Dolphins. And let's see if we can take down almost MVP and X-Factor Cedric Wilson. No, Cedric Wilson was an almost MVP. I meant Jacoby Brissett, but Cedric Wilson has X-Factor and has been up there for Offensive Player of the Year multiple times. All of their top threes there are wide receivers. This is an interesting team. Snow games are absolutely the best. In the playoffs, they're a bit messy because it kind of feels like certain teams get advantages, but it's part of the game, man. So let's see if we can take down my... Miami, I definitely think we have the advantage here. I say that and they go up 7-0. We do put up a field goal, but they put up a touchdown. It is now 14-6 Miami. We do put up a touchdown, though. It's 14-13. They put up a field goal. It's 17-13. This is hard to commentate. It goes too quick. They are now up 24-21 going into the fourth quarter. We take the lead 28-24. They take it back. We take it back and we stop them. We win 35-31. Unfortunately, taking down Jacoby Brissett. I feel bad about that. I'm actually a big Jacoby Brissett fan in real life. He's been decent, and he's been on bad teams a lot in his career, and he's done pretty well with them. Definitely a QB duel. Both were very good today. Seven total passing touchdowns, zero total interceptions. Definitely an offensive day in this game. Jamar Chase having a monster game. Tyreek, two touchdowns. It looks like we did get a lot of pressure, though. David Long, Logan Wilson, and Randall Carmichael all got sacks. Cater Kohu with three tackles for loss. That's interesting. Interesting. But that means we're going to be heading to the Super Bowl. I said that really weirdly. I have a hard time speaking sometimes. Forgive me. <laughs> so this is actually pretty huge going into the Super Bowl. We get these re things, recap whatevers. One for the uh, Blizzard. I don't know what this one does. I don't remember. I think it gives you like morale or XP or something. It probably gives you morale. I don't care, Lael Collins. You weren't good this year. Shut up. 2,500 XP. Okay, that's what that is. And five staff points, whatever. But the XP is pretty big. And then Hot Opponent. This is a little busted. I don't know if they've changed it by this point, but it's a little busted. It gives us like plus 10, 20 morale or something crazy. Oh, that's different than I remember. It gives us plus 10 break tackle, play rec, and tackle. And 25. Okay, no, that's about what I remember. So for that one win alone, we got 5,000 XP for each player and plus 10 for three different stats. So that's insane. Let's check out what these upgrades are. Jamar Chase, Logan Wilson, Evan McPherson, Vaughn. Bell, Daxton Hill, Alex got basically like most of our roster. Some players down here might have even gotten two upgrades. Nah, but that's still huge. Good lord. But in the Super Bowl, we're going to be taking on the 11 and 6 New York Giants. Now we, we clearly have the better team here. They do have a better defense actually. They have an 88 overall defense to our 87, but our offense is 7 overall better than theirs. We have a 91 to their 84, 89 overall team to their 85. We we have the better record. We have the better everything. I'm excited to lose this game. But before we lose, we have some upgrades here. Jermaine Pratt and Jesse Bates. Two actually pretty big upgrades for our defense. The morale is definitely a big help to this team as well. Because, I mean, we went from, what, like 87 straight to 89 from all the morale and upgrades and everything. So beating the Dolphins was huge. I mean, we had to beat them anyways to continue in the playoffs. But it was very good for us. But we have a uh, Super Bowl scenario thing here. Uh, I guess it depends on if we win or lose. I guess we'll go everything because I mean it kind of is but also I might do another year anyways. But let's jump in against the Giants. Oh they have CJ Stroud. That's an interesting top 
three, Nick Bosa, CJ Stroud, and Gabe Davis. I mean, not their top three overall players, but they're at least th their top three X factors. So let's jump in and let's see if we can take them down. I swear to God, every Super Bowl we play is in AT&T State. I guess it's just because uh, it's where it's going to be. And we always make the Super Bowl in year three if we make one. Well, I guess in the last one we made one year one, but I'm sick of playing in the goddamn Cowboy Stadium. I guess this probably isn't fun for the Giants because division rival, but well, I guess it might be fun because they're getting to play the Super Bowl. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. We are up 6-3 in the second quarter, up 13-3 to now. Uh, up 13-10, the Giants do put up a touchdown. We put up another field goal. We were up 16-10 going into half, but they take the lead 20-16. to So, oh, uh, okay. They're up 27-16 now. Our offense has completely stalled. We do put up points, but it's not going to be enough. We lose by seven to New York. And I don't want to go out like that. I don't even want to watch their thing. I'm not going to pull a Stefan Diggs watching the other team celebrate. Joe Burrow was solid today, but did throw a pick. Joe Mixon did well when he got the ball. He just didn't get enough, maybe. T. Higgins was very good. It looks like our offensive line maybe sold a bit. Three sacks allowed. One and a half each from Rashawn Gary and Ogbanya Akaronko. This is a weird team we went against. Nick Bosa didn't even get a sack. I, I don't know. Interception from Bobby Wagner. What is this team? What is this? How are they only a fucking 85 overall or whatever they are? Either way, we lose the Super Bowl, but we're running this back. I'm not finishing on a Super Bowl loss. Maybe it's not a good idea to continue because I forgot we have some contracts to sign here. Good lord. Well, we'll start with T. Higgins. We, we're gonna have to go very player friendly to get him back. It's 24 mil a year or something like that. That's not super fun. Let's see if he takes it. Okay, he takes it. That's good at the very least. Now, we're not gonna be able to re-sign anybody else, but Trey Hendrickson has been kind of mid for us. He had one good year, but other than that, he hasn't really been worth what he wants. Everyone else here, I think I'm comfortable letting them go. I mean, they're either depth players or just not super good, so we're gonna let everybody else there go, and we're gonna try and run it back and try to win the Super Bowl this year. I don't know if we can build quite as good of a team as that was, but we are definitely gonna try. Unfortunately, there aren't really any cuts we can make. We could cut Alex Kappa, but I don't wanna cut a starting guard for no real reason. Well, let's see what we can do in free agency. This could be a huge mistake. We could be terrible next year, <laughs> but that's part of the fun, right? Seeing me struggle, I'm sure you guys enjoy it. You know, it might be time to actually consider switching to a three four now that trey hendrickson is gone because he was kind of the piece that was keeping me from doing that uh we'll see we'll see we'll see what we can do here in free agency we're just gonna go for some like lower level signings because we don't have much money at all and i'm surprised we can even get this many solid players for like 16 mil total first one is gonna be tevin jenkins we're gonna play him at right tackle didn't really work out in real life when they tried it or did they even try him there i feel like they didn't even give him a chance there and then they played him at guard and he's been really really good in real life this year. One of the most underrated players in the league. I mean, typically offensive linemen go underrated anyways, but still. The Bears offensive line was pretty decent this year, honestly. Much better than I thought it would be. Next player we're gonna be going for is Eric Stokes, 96 speed, good lord. He'll kind of be like our third corner. I don't even know if we're gonna start him. I don't know what DJ Turner is up to, but we'll see what happens there. Mostly just because he's under five mil for a pretty good player and he's interested. And then Chris Barnes, like a fourth linebacker, but he's so cheap. He's three and a half mil a year for like a borderline starting level linebacker. So why not? Let's see if any of these three sign. I do expect all three to sign just because we have the lead on all of them. But let's see. They all sign and yeah, they all sign with us. That was a pretty huge free agency class, even though it wasn't flashy. That basically filled every need we have left other than maybe a true elite pass rusher, but we just didn't have the money for that. So we couldn't even if we wanted to. You know, we could play Alex Kappa at right tackle too. That might honestly make more sense. Let's try that. At 66305, that makes a lot more sense than 66320. Plus, I believe, well, I guess both were tackles coming out of college for the most part. Both actually go down one overall moving out to right tackle, so not super ideal, but it is what it is. Is everybody on our offensive line like an 80, 81 overall? That's definitely interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Here in the draft, I kind of, you know, didn't consider the fact that we wouldn't pick until number 31, but but that's, that's fine. You love to see a division rival doing bad in the Baltimore Ravens here. They have the number one pick. But what do we want to do here? I feel like that's always the question going into the draft. I feel like I never know. <laughs> I should know, but I never do. Ah, uh, yeah, let me 
grab a 24 year old rookie who doesn't look that good. No, thank you. I'm good. Why does everybody here look kind of bad? <laughs> there are like no good players left. I guess let's just go Darren Craig, kind of maybe best player available. He's 6'4", 303, 22 years old out of Washington, 39 reps on the bench of the Combine in his pro day, elite strength, obviously, has A, block shed, play rec, tackle, B, awareness, looking pretty good, let's take him normal dev. That's kind of what I expected though, he should be a pretty good overall, but no dev trait kinda sucks. But wait, I forgot to show something. Two of the top five players were receivers, and the number one overall projected pick was a receiver. I don't know if he actually went number one overall, but he was projected number one overall. And then the Dolphins here take another receiver named Waddle, because I think they just lost Jalen Waddle, so they're replacing Waddle with Waddle, which is something. Definitely a strategy. Another all A's across the board center. Um, this guy doesn't look as good though. He doesn't have much power, B run block finesse, and he is not very strong. 28 reps on the bench. He is very agile, very quick, but not very strong. That's not a great scheme fit, but maybe. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to go here. Let's just take him. Hidden dev, 84 strength, 79 jumping, 84 excel. Looks like a very athletic player minus the speed, so we'll take it. Now that I think about it, I maybe should have gone with like a receiver because I mean that center is never going to play for us and we do need a fourth receiver. I mean we don't even have a fourth receiver on the entire roster so maybe that wasn't the best move but it's the move we made so it is what it is. First in strength 19 reps that's interesting. Ooh. Oh no he looks terrible. <laughs> I don't know there just aren't any good receivers left honestly. This guy kind of looks like the receiver we took last year Addison Dwyer. He's 5'8", 195, 22 years old out of Georgia Southern. That's an interesting college. Ran a 4-3-9 at the Combine. 4-3-5 at his pro day. Not strong. He's very similar to the receiver we took last year. Just much worse 20-yard shuttle. Elite acceleration, though. And we don't know for sure if he has, like, A deep route. It's probably B. It might be an A, but he's not really good at anything else. He doesn't have good spec catch like the last guy had. I'm kind of talking myself out of this guy. I don't know if I want him, actually. Because basically everything good about the last guy we took that guy doesn't have. Also, why are there so many white boy deep threats in like these draft classes? Like those are kind of rare. Like Braxton Keys too. He's probably fast. Eh, 442. Not super fast, but pretty fast. Jacob Alexander too. Oh no, he's slow. 449. That's bad for a deep threat. Either way though, I think we're gonna go Jermaine Neighbors, even though I wasn't gonna go with him. He's 23 though, but 5'10", 178, definitely a smaller, thinner receiver out of Notre Dame. Skipped the combine and his pro day, so must be hurt or something, or just didn't wanna. Typically, it seems like players with bad injury ratings are pretty good, and he has C to F injury which is probably like D or F. His B deep route, C catch in traffic, so that's fine. Let's take him. Normal dev, but 95 speed. Okay, that could be a gem. 52 strength isn't great, but could be a good player. Well, this was not our best draft ever, honestly. Um, <laughs> Darren Craig is only a 73 overall. I'm very, very surprised by that. I thought he would be at least like a 75, 76. What is he at defensive tackle? Oh, he goes up to a 77. That might have to be the move. Even though I did want a defensive end more, that makes the draft look a lot better. Kevin Clifford also kind of sucks. Only a 71 overall. I thought he would be good. I mean, he's lacking power, but his finesse is really good. I guess he's just not the strongest in the world, but he's a really quick lineman. So I don't know. That's weird. And then Jermaine Neighbors is only a 69 overall, which nice. I don't feel like I've said nice in this video. No, I definitely have the completion percentage and probably something else. Probably many other things, but 95 speed, of course. Decent deep route. Hey, I get another excuse to say 69. Uh, medium route running, nice, 69. Out of curiosity, okay, he's a 68 overall running back. No thanks. Yeah, I don't know about a 52 strength injury prone running back. Sounds like a recipe for success, if you ask me. I did take the rest of these picks, and apparently I shouldn't have, but Will Stallworth is okay as hidden dev. But overall, definitely not our best draft. However, I want to see. Okay, the first 
first overall pick was not a receiver. Will Cox went number three, but he was the one who was projected to be the number one overall pick. He is a 78, so it wouldn't have been terrible. And honestly, I think receiver at this point might be arguably the most valuable position in the league. Oh, he has star. Definitely not the most valuable. I take that back, but more valuable than most people say. How about this Downs guy? He's also a 78. What's his dev trait? Also star. What? Sucks for the teams that drafted them, apparently. Here is a look at the team going into the fourth and definitely final season. This is a really good roster. Zero holes on offense. The only one that I'm concerned about is our right tackle, right guard situation. Because, I mean, we didn't get good play last year there anyways, so I guess it would be hard for it to be a downgrade, but I'm still concerned about it. Specifically right tackle, not so much right guard. Outside of that, though, this team is very nice. And then defensively, my main concern definitely is the pass rush because it's going to be Sam Hubbard at an 80 overall. And what's this guy's first name? Randall Carmichael, that's what I thought, at a 79, technically a 77 overall, but he does have the morale and everything. So it's definitely a solid looking defense. And something I didn't even notice is Chris Steele has X Factor. Unfortunately, he's like a pure run defender, has not much pass rush literally at all. Like no pass rush. 66 power moves is his best move. He has no pass rush, but he is a very good run defender. Obviously with the 99 strength, basically, it will be a pure 99 at the end of the year. Good block shed, good play rec, solid tackle, 90 impact block so he can just mow dudes over. He's a really good player. Should hopefully develop throughout the year as well, being basically a full-time starter now. This team is looking really good. Here, are the look at the spe here is a look at the specialists for those who care. T. Higgins once again in the slot. We did pick up Donovan Peoples-Jones just chilling in free agency. That's a player I think would be very good if he had an actual quarterback. We picked up Jake Moody because we had no good kicker. But this is a very nice looking team. And let's get to... Let's just go straight to the end of year number four and let's see what we can do. Wow, at the end of year number four, we actually have the same record as last year we finished 12 and 5 oh my god okay this was a good year from joe burrow this better be an mvp 51 almost 5200 yards 52 touchdowns nine interceptions 71 percent completion percentage he was very good joe mixon 1300 yards 5.1 yards per carry 16 touchdowns jamar chase and t higgins were both studs irv smith finally had a very good year 930 yards 11 touchdowns brandon armstrong was okay as our third receiver blocking the o-line was very very good alex kappa sucked but outside of that everyone was good cofield was questionable everyone else was very good though logan wilson led the team in tackles with 125 112 for david long it's good that those numbers are low it means our defense is getting off the field dj reader with 21 tackles for loss 14 each from carmichael and Steele. have i been calling him carmichael did i get hit with like a flashbang why do i not remember his last name being carmichael Am I okay? I feel like I've been calling him something else. Sam Hubbard had 12. Am I all right? Sam Hubbard led the team with 12 and a half tackles for loss. He was very good. Randall Carmichael, really good year as well. Seven and a half sacks, 14 tackles for loss. Outside of that though, like nothing else. DJ Reader with three and a half and interceptions. Chidobe Awuzie with six. I'm glad we got him back. David Long with four, three each for Hill and Bell, and then one for a few players there. We had the best offense in the league once again again. How about defense? Ninth best defense. So we had a actually good defense this year. First in points scored. You love to see that. How about points allowed? 11th. Okay, we were 9th and 11th. Not, I'm glad we're not a New York team. But Joe Burrow does win MVP. Of course. I mean, 5,200 yards, 52 touchdowns, only 9 picks. That'll happen. Lots of 99s and 98s here. Rust down to a 74 overall. Somehow up there for MVP. Marcus Mariota on the Packers at a 69 overall. Nice. This is a weird list. Kenny Pickett at only a 70 overall on the Saints. All right, Offensive Player of the Year goes to Jonathan Taylor. Joe Burrow at number five, Juju up there. No other Bengals. Defensive Player of the Year goes to TJ Watt. That's like his first one, right? Or again, maybe I just got hit with like a flashbang or something. Maybe I just don't remember. <laughs> no Bengals up there. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Dexter Nix. That's a cool name. That's a fucking fire name. Mix of Dexter McCluster and Hakeem Nix. I, I don't know. No Bengals, unsurprisingly. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Rashawn Gethers 
of the Colts. Again, another really good football player name. No Bengals, no uh, rookie D lineman, whatever his name was. But we're going to be taking on the 8 and 9 New York Jets here. Now, also Max Payne, that's a fire name. But honestly, I don't care what we do in the playoffs, at least early here. If we make it to the conference championship, then I'll jump in. But I don't want this video to be six hours. So we're just going to simulate this one. If we lose to the 8 and 9 Jets, it just wasn't meant to be. So let's see what happens. Okay, no, we smoke them 35 to 7. That was not a close game. Luke Musk grave gets an upgrade point but same deal here i don't care if we lose this game i'll only jump in if we are in the conference championship if not we've already been to a super bowl it's already a fairly successful rebuild and we destroy them as well okay we'll jump in now we well it's working just simulating the games but i do want to jump in and actually see how the team does but we're going to be taking on the 11 and 6 only 83 overall kansas city chiefs in the conference championship let's jump in and let's see what we can do do here here we go in the conference championship in the rain against kansas city i don't know who gets the advantage there that's kind of a wash i mean no pun intended because it's a rain game but does it rain a lot in cincinnati i have no idea but the chiefs take an early three nothing lead here it looks like they're gonna go right down and score again they're up 10 nothing 17 nothing going into half we put up seven actually before half but we'll see if we can do any more with the ball here they put up another three it is now 20 to 7 going into the fourth they put up another three three they're just destroying us it's 37 kansas city we put up a touchdown but it's much too little too late so it probably would have been better to just simulate the game instead of jumping in but either way that is gonna be the end of today's rebuild here's one last look at the team but again if you have not already for whatever reason be sure to like and subscribe turn on notifications if you want to be one of the first ever people to see my videos and let me know what team to do next because i will give you a shout out sub to you everyone else will sub to you and you will be forever cemented as an OG of the channel. But I really do hope you did enjoy. I've been loving making these. I'm glad you guys have been enjoying them. And I'll see you guys again in the next video. Goodbye.